EFG Science TV, The Wave Hunters. Do Einstein's gravitational waves rock the universe? An important day for Henning and Alexander. Today they plan to make a measurement of the squeezed light. Now they'll see whether the months of planning and work in the laboratory were worth the effort. Only if the experiment functions properly here in the laboratory of the Albert Einstein Institute and produces the expected measurement value for squeezed light can the entire structure be transported to the GEO 600 detector and installed. But before the measurement is performed, the entire structure must be adjusted and prepared for data collection. And here we again see the black blocks from the last episode. Our lasers are located in this section and in this entire area, in the first two thirds, the laser is prepared in such a way that we can generate squeezed light here in the small area. And then the squeezed light is directed across for detection, which occurs back here in the shielded box. When processing the light, we also produce a small amount of scattered light. To keep that from interfering with the detection back there, we shield that area with the wall created using the black building blocks. What we actually want to measure are a very small number of photons in our squeezed beams, and this measurement can be disturbed by the millions, even billions of photons that we constantly produce here with our laser. And of these, a small portion could, of course, somehow manage to find their way into our detector together with the squeezed light, due to scattering at the optical components. And later, when we perform the measurement, we'll put the covers onto the experiment to eliminate potential interference from ambient light. And then, even the lights in the laboratory need to be switched off, in order to be able to perform the measurement. What we see here now is a live measurement of the natural noise, of the quantum noise of nature. I can freeze the image here. That's now shown in the background. And when we now switch on our squeezed light, we see how we can reduce our quantum noise to a value that is actually a new world record. That's never been measured before. What we see here is a measurement of up to 9 decibels squeezing at a frequency of 2 kilohertz. And with that, we've reduced the natural quantum noise of nature by a factor of 8. And with these results, the two researchers make their way to their boss to present him with the news. So, Roman, we brought a few results along from the lab. Like to take a look? That looks good. That looks really good. Here in blue, we've measured the shot noise. The level of the noise line is nothing but a measure of the random quantum noise of the photons. Lowering this noise line now means that the same number of photons is always measured each second. That's exactly what we were hoping to accomplish. That's exactly it. Great job! From the random quantum noise of the photons, a squeezed quantum state has now been created. Yes, our laser for the squeezed light appears to function, and exactly as we imagined it a year and a half ago. Henning and Alexander have truly done an outstanding job. We still want to perform a long-term test. And then the laser can be moved to the GEO 600. Things will then get exciting again. We'll then show that the sensitivity of the GEO 600 can actually be improved with the squeezed light. And we think we can then convince all of our colleagues in Europe, the USA, Australia and Japan that in the future every gravitational wave detector should be equipped with a squeezed light laser. So we're finished. We'll just put the covers on the experiment to ensure that no dust gets in during transport. Then we'll take one last measurement before moving it on to router. Next time, find out what the future holds for gravitational physics and the Albert Einstein Institute. Visit DFG Science TV for more information. Awaken the researcher within you.